Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm Derek. And I'm Phil. And it's time for anything. Today's topic is animal consciousness. Humans are people too, James. Humans are people Wait, too, Wait, that's yes. not what I meant. Humans are animals too. <laughs> <laughs> Humans are people. You had one <laughs> job. You had it's fine. It's one. Fine. It is. Humans it's all right. Are, humans, Don't cut that out. Humans are animals too. Okay? Humans are there animals too, but that's not really why we're all those here. Levels it are. is. It's part of why we're here, but it's not really why we're here. No. It's part of why we're, we're not, here, we're not, but it's not why we're here. I mean, it directly relates to the reason for us being here right now, but that is not the intention behind the episode. Correct. <laughs> but uh, animal consciousness is. And I guess, you know, way back when, when we came from apes, we saw consciousness. Even though we weren't humans yet, mm-hmm. as we know them today. Correct. We were still conscious animals just as a dog is or a bird a mm. bird uh even potentially a spider right a spider's not an animal it's an arachnid but see i mean you say well a dog is conscious and we say a bird's conscious but what does conscious mean and other people might say sentient right you've heard a lot of people say humans are the only sentient species on the planet but i'll, I'll finish that in a minute go ahead with what you were going to say so just Quick Google search of our insects animals, and the first people also ask question was are insects classified as animals? This comes from Wikipedia. There's just this one line of text here. Insects are the most diverse group of animals. Okay, interesting. So I would assume that they insects are, are animals. Animals. Oh, well, that's so. Wikipedia. Yeah. Crazy part. Um, the last sentence, right there. Insects are the most Diverse group of animals, they include more than a million described species and represent more than half of all known living organisms. That's insane. I, um, you know, it might have been the X-Files, but I heard that ants... The X-Files. Yeah. <laughs> ants uh, outnumber humans, like, uh, like five million to one or yeah, something. Yeah, something crazy so like that. It it's, definitely isn't five million to one. It's absolutely astronomical. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But, you know, you also think about the lifespan of an ant. Yeah, uh, it's true. But at any given time, well, so I here's guess. a question: Are ants conscious or sentient? Because so we can't even begin to talk about those things until we define consciousness and sentience. And consciousness is just based off a quick Google definition search: the state of being awake and aware of one's surroundings. So if you're awake, meaning that you're not sleeping, and you're aware of your surroundings, you're technically conscious. Mm-hmm. And if you are sentient, you are able to perceive or feel things. And I think that almost classifies perceive any feel. living life. Yeah. Trees can perceive and feel things to whatever degree they can. Apparently, we've now found that they can feel when you're touching them. So but, are trees so, therefore conscious so or sentient? Really, trees are sentient, then, oh, okay. but not trees necessarily are sentient, conscious. But not conscious. Right? Interesting. Because although, yeah, they can feel and perceive the things around them, they're not necessarily aware of their surroundings, mm. right? which is a staple of consciousness. Okay. And they're also maybe not awake because they don't have a brain. Asleep, right? yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a very good point. Hmm. Yeah, so you could say that jellyfish are sentient. Jellyfish are not conscious. Maybe. Yeah, I, as long as jellyfish don't have brains. Which I guess they don't, which is why they're so weird, right? Maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm kind of stuck on the idea of the chicken and the egg theory when it comes to consciousness. Like, when did consciousness start? Was it right in the beginning with the first single-celled organism? I guess we have sort of an attraction to seeing what life does and what its product is and determining the degree in which it's conscious based on what it does in its life. Mm, okay. But humans are unique in the, in the sense that we are existential. We question what it is to be human. We ponder our own existence and our purpose and we... You know, take psychotropic drugs to expand our mind and or even shrink it down a little bit just to uh, alleviate some stress that's causing that that our brain is causing us 
other animals don't necessarily do that. They mm-hmm. can get anxious, but they're not, at least as far as I'm concerned, I never asked a dog or a little lantern fly. I would never ask a lantern fly for any of its opinions. I only seek to murder them. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're getting at. But I, I you know, I, I can't tell you for sure if animals know what they are and what uh, and ponder their purpose. They just do what they were born to do. Yeah. So I, I think it's pretty safe to say that any animal with a brain is conscious and sentient. Right. Yes. Just based on the definitions we've given. Based on the definitions we've mm-hmm. given, yeah. Yes. But we also know consciousness to maybe mean a little bit more than just that. Right. Like they're like, the same correct. degrees of consciousness. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a an interesting quote I kind of want to read. This is from uh, Jonathan Birch, Alexandra K. Schnell, and uh, Nicola S. Clayton from Dimensions of Animal Consciousness. This was just a quick article that I found. This is actually on the episode page on the website, and also we're going to reference another article later. Both of these you can find on the episode page on timeforanything.com. So I'll just read this quick. In 2012, the Cambridge Declaration on Consciousness crystallized a scientific consensus that humans are not the only conscious beings and that non-human animals, including all mammals, birds, and many other creatures, including octopi, possess neurological substrates complex enough to support conscious experiences. It's octopuses. I know, but I said octopi, so fucking who cares? (laughs) But anyway, it's just, it's it's interesting. Uh, I guess technically now it's octopuses. Is so it maybe, really? maybe, I, yeah, maybe. So I is it cactuses, not cacti? No, it's still cacti. I think it's still cacti. Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> either, okay. either way, it's, it's interesting to me now that <laughs> the scientific <laughs> community, feng shui, the scientific community is now saying, yes, almost all life that is awake and able to perceive or feel things is therefore conscious. And I also think it's interesting that people don't really consider that when you look at factory farming mm-hmm. or... Mm. When you go, ah, hunting, hunting is a different topic, different ball field, because some people hunt to survive, and in that instance, you can't do anything about it, but hunting for sport, you know, you're ending a conscious life. Yeah. I, I definitely, I go back and forth with it, mm-hmm. because I think that animal agriculture has gotten us this far. Mm-hmm. And it ha- is sort of a byproduct of civilization, but we are at the point now where we have sustainable alternatives yes. to meat, and we have the capacity to move away from eating actual animal meat. Mm-hmm. Sorry, this just kind of makes me think of something that I think James, or maybe I don't remember which one of you asked it, but someone said it. Maybe it was when we were doing an R pan would you eat lab-grown meat? Mm. Mm-hmm. And th- that's just something to think about. Is it, yeah. is if, it depends on the circumstances around it, but if we could remove the process of making tons of animals suffer, it might be beneficial. Like Think about the life of being a cow. Put your sensory reception into a cow. It's a horrible life if you're just stuck in a stall being milked to death, and a yeah. lot of them die half they live for half the lifespan they should, quote unquote, because they're just they're they're impregnated and give birth, impregnated and yeah, give birth. Yeah, I was and... gonna say it's pretty grotesque because like the cows wouldn't produce milk if they weren't constantly pregnant, so they're also right. getting pregnant. But like those cow babies are then either slaughtered for veal or raised to be another same, another yeah. cow, right. another cow, <laughs> yeah. Um, just imagine if you... I know, it's really sad. Like, if you put yourself in that perspective, it's terrible. Well, just even a human woman. A human woman giving birth nonstop till she's dead, the idea of that is morbid. Unl- unless they're all for it. Like, oh, that's my thing. I just want to have as many kids as I can. Sure, fine. But but forcibly doing it, locking them in an area, making yeah, a woman be unhealthy and give birth. For them. Oh, it's that's horrible. Right. right. Your body doesn't have a chance to recover. It's really terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like really a terrible, terrible. concept. Yeah. One, of, one of my friend's mother, my, my friend's mom, 
uh, was under that. Like, I want to have ki- as many kids as I can. Yeah. But eventually, you know, you shouldn't have kids anymore. That's a very good point. Right. So what makes us think that cows are any different or pigs or, you know, wh- whatever that you're forcibly impregnating repeatedly? Why think that well, their bodies can withstand? And, and just, yes, some animals, you know, produce litters and uh, they're used to, you know, multiple cycles of birthing. But, you know, they're, large they mammals, get, not so much. Right, right. Primates, definitely not. Yeah. I remember learning in Honors Bio 2, great class. There were seven of us. It's fantastic. We learned that the human body has evolved to make childbirth incredibly difficult. It's not intentional that way, but it, kind, it of kind of it kind of is because it's all based on survivability of your young. Hmm. So turtles have hundreds of eggs mm-hmm. and 20 make it to the ocean by the time the seagulls pick them all clean or maybe five or ten. Right, <laughs> if that. Yeah, but humans typically have one or two and before modern medicine, surviving childbirth was like a 50-50 shot. Yeah. So it really wasn't like... Well, let's see... Pregnancy I'm... is great, and the, the gift of life is very poetic, but the reality of it's a lot more morbid. Like, childbirth is hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's very difficult. So, um, yeah, when it comes to animals being mass-bred and slaughtered and milked, for their resources, it's pretty terrible. It's unethical, at least on a karmic level. Maybe maybe not based on our human ethics, but in terms of like if the you... ethics of nature, we are going, yet again, against the grain, which I we do you mean. at every part. But C- Consistently. Yeah, consistently. We're very good at just destroying nature and basically ourselves in the long run. But yeah, that's, that's our M.O., but I still kind of, I, I, I sit on the idea of to what extent are these animals conscious? Feel pain? For sure. Mm-hmm. And that part, like, really is tough with me when it comes to slaughterhouses and stuff like that. But abstract thought. Right. Things like that. I that's guess, where we separate. Sorry, I don't mean to. I keep, no, go ahead. I don't mean to cut go you ahead. off. Go ahead. Nope. It, it brings me back to this thought I've I've just I feel like I've said it so many times of like the if if we're believing in the soul okay just if that's what you want to call it then whatever the physical form is that that soul is inhabiting it's limited to that device so you might perceive things in a very samey way when you're a dog Mm-hmm. Right, like you can you can smell really good, and you can taste and feel your paws on the ground, and you like sleep and dreams and all these things. But yeah, you you can't wrap your head around where your owner goes during the day, mm-hmm. or the idea that they're gonna feed you even though you think they're not going to. Right, yeah. it's, you can't understand these these higher level concepts and processes. But going you can on. you can see thought processes very directly when it comes to like household pets oh, like yeah. cats and dogs for example yeah. my cat yesterday so like she's old and fat and she needs to be brushed oh, Kiki. like every single day i know it's terrible it's it's pure animal abuse on my parents part but like i there's nothing i can do at this point yeah, I, I just it's it is not your responsibility it would you, never you, be my you cat. can say as much as you can but it's not yeah I, and i love I kiki you. to death like, she is adorable. She's dynamic. We want to talk about personality. I've never met a cat like mine. Like, mm-hmm. she's more dog. So I was, like, I got out the brush yesterday because, you know, got to brush her, fat ass. And I, <laughs> I'm, i like, reaching down, but I'm also on my phone, so I'm, like, kind of distracted, and I'm holding it. And she reaches up, like, wraps her paw around my hand and pulls it down to her body. Yeah. And it's just, like, now. Give me yeah, this like brush. brush this. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. And I, right there, I was like, holy crap. Right. You you made a decision. You are in your head thinking, I want to be brushed. Yes. yes but I cannot physically she's do a, it. She's aware. She's lucid. She's conscious. Mm-hmm. She's sentient. She's conscious. See, and that's that's the whole theme of, the, of today's thing is I yeah. think that cats and a lot of other animals are conscious. They're aware 
they just can't process things to the extent that we can. So mm-hmm. they just seem, we try to give them this, oh, they have this stimulus and response. It's, I don't think it's that cut and dry or that simple. I think they can look around and think, well, I want this. And then they'll go to their owner and they're gonna, I'm going to meow at them so that they get me food or something. They're, yeah. they're thinking these things and they're doing them. They're very aware of what they're mm-hmm. doing. I just don't think animals outside of humans are as egotistical in the sense that... Okay, like, I could agree with that. Yeah. They want to survive, yes, and animals will kill to survive. Sure. I mean, when you look at pack animals like apes and wolves, you have the alpha, right? right. And that sort of comes from a place of ego. It's also biological, right? Because yes. they're the healthiest, most fit male mm-hmm. of the pack, so they are the leader. But the other animals that try to... You take that place from them. No, it's my Challenge them. It's my spot, not right. yours. Right, that, that maybe comes from some ego that is kind okay. of imbued in their consciousness. I can see but that. It, it could also be like for reproductive things, mm-hmm. like obviously you want the best genetics of your pack to be passed on, so the alpha male probably okay. has the most yeah, so it's partners or yeah. whatever it may be. I mean, you take away the cushion of modern society and we're just back to surviving. Dude, if you threw Fit human... dudes, like in-shape dudes, are they're, they're better off. But th- if you throw a person in the wild with just their naked... You should just say fit people in general, honestly. <laughs> but I, I think... you're kind of screwed either way, right? So there's a way you can survive. But I'm thinking if you throw someone into the wild, no tools... No clothing, nothing. Well, how are you going to feed? Someone's, oh, well, I'll use a rock to, no, that's a tool. You're not, nope, no tools. Humans are screwed. You almost can't survive. You, you yeah, can. I mean, humans, humans need tools. Which you would have to yeah. forage. Yeah. Yeah, you would just have to yeah. pick Physically, we are not evolved fine. anymore to physically do anything efficiently without you could hunt. tools. It's mm, kind of scary. I don't think we ever. You could would. maybe hunt small game. Mm. Uh, Maybe you could you could potentially catch you try you try yeah you could How certainly you try it? you just lay yeah. there camouflage sneak with, uh, can't set up a trap that's a tool you know it's sneak one hundred just, just you just lay there you just lay there and then, <laughs> and grab then you wait you're just wearing and your nightingale armor come up to you you just grab them well you could even do know. hand fishing yeah. you could do hand you could do hand fishing hand fishing is possible if you're in a place that has water. Yeah, there there is another quote here that I want to read because this is it kind of plays this ties to the kind of factory farming. Yeah, factory right. farming. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it ties in also with the quote that was read earlier. So this is from uh, Mark Beckoff, who's an American biologist, an ethologist, and a behavior... Ethnologist. It says ethologist. 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 He's an ethologist. Ethology. Ethologist. I guess so. Ethological. Uh, behavioral ecologist, yeah. and he's a writer. Eth- ethologist. 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 He is Professor Emeritus of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of Boulder, Colorado. So this is from one of his papers titled, After 2,500 Studies, It's Time to Declare Animal Sentience Proven. So what he says is, Animals are sentient, and that they can suffer and feel pain as recognized by the Treaty of Lisbon, that's interesting, and the rapidly growing field of compassionate conservation. Evidence of animal sentience is everywhere. The remaining questions are a matter of why sentience evolved, not if it evolved. And that kind of makes me think of what you said earlier: is when when did it pop up? Yeah, and like, why? At what why point did it pop up? Is it just like a like a computer booting up? Was it just like boop boop boop? You have consciousness now. You have think, evolved enough cells. I think consciousness, not sentience, because we said that trees are sentient. Mm-hmm. But consciousness, it has to be attached to the brain. Right, brain, yeah. eyes, taste, having senses, think, having senses. But you we know, could still. Well, I guess you really couldn't just by the definition we gave be a brain in a in a vat and still be conscious, right? You might still be alive in a sense. Like yeah, you could still maybe be thinking about. Yeah, because I guess you're not you really awake and. You're not well, you would have to pump blood to the brain as if you yeah, yeah, had a heart and oxygen. But, but based but, on definition, it's not in the state of being awake or aware of one's surroundings. Well, let's say it is just, awake. Let's say this brain in the vat is awake. Okay, fair. So yeah. Just hypothetical. It's still not aware of its surroundings. Right. right? It's not attached to any sensory 
output or input yeah. or anything. Yeah. I think it doesn't have eyes, yeah. so we can't see. It doesn't have ears. So are you therefore so sentient hear. but not conscious? Yeah, it's it's sentient. Well, but like you a, can't perceive a, or feel things either because you don't have. Right. Oh, that's such a good point. Unless so they poke like, your brain and make you that's feel, true. which is really weird. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's like it just deduces you. But the thing is, is you're probably still dreaming or in almost a meditative state in which sure, you're just floating in your brain. that's not aware of your surroundings. Co- correct. Because yeah. you are it's the brain. You, really you can't bad. hear either. Yeah. You would probably just think things. It's the, the idea of hearing is a crazy evolutionary development to me because it, it essentially takes vibrations from... An external source hits your cochlea, and then chemical secretions are sent up to your brain for your brain to go. That. That's a thing. Yeah. Or whatever sound you're hearing in 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 a instant, and as think, fast as I can say words. It makes you think of oh, if a tree falls in the woods but no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, yeah, the reverberations still move outward, but it's weird that. People. It's a silly saying. Of I, I course guess it, it does. Is. Well, yeah. Well, well, maybe not though. Well, you were you always play devil's advocate. Well, no. I mean, I mean, this is this is just pure skeptical point of view, and this kind of ties into what I was saying about the brain and the vet. You know, you know Descartes' argument of uh, the the evil demon argument. Yes. It's well, you that, want to elaborate on that quick? Just uh, sure. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to spin it a different way. Because it's, it's a little that, bit like, more modern. You could just. Like, uh, every, all your entire perception could just be a demon tricking you or something right. like that. Right, so Descartes said it was a demon, but the, the better example for nowadays is the brain in the vat, right? Okay. Yeah, there's an evil scientist that has your brain in a vat, and has hook, it's hooked up, and you are perceiving this reality, but not the reality that you are actually in, that your brain is in. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Um, so <laughs> if the tree falls in the woods somewhere... Uh, and nobody hears it, but maybe it didn't fall, right? Maybe the tree isn't falling because nobody's perceiving it at that time. It's right. not being generated. Like it is, It's almost kind of like a video game where the, the sort of. space isn't rendered until there's someone viewing it. Right. And, you know, oh, so that's, could, like, that's, like quantum, that's quantum physics in a nutshell. Yeah. The double yeah. slit yeah. experiment yeah. that we watched that video on where uh, waves did not become a particle until the the wave was measured and then only once it was measured it be it broke down into a particle like and also it, they can all change possible states, realities collapse they can change states almost instantly which means that there's some kind of transmission being sent faster than the speed of light yeah it's called a uh, quantum entanglement so the idea being that every atom has a counterpart and they're constantly turning on and off or like oscillating yeah in tandem and uh pretty much what the double slit experiment showed us was that unless perceived everything is a wave but it is also a particle but it has to be perceived so maybe a tree doesn't make a sound when it falls hmm yeah i i don't know for sure i i find all I know is that I find the double slit experiment to be really interesting. Yeah, it's kind of in weird. terms of trying to understand the reality around us. It all kind of makes sense, and I think looping it back to consciousness, we clearly have the benefit of being. We can, we can talk about these things. Yes, we can talk. We can study quantum entanglement, and yet again, cannot. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't even think dolphins can. And we'll get we'll get into dolphins later. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. I got it covered. Um, got some dolphin facts. I just I could probably just rant about dolphins for an entire episode, but um, <laughs> that's not why we're here. Um, yeah, we we have a lot of luxuries with our consciousness, and even if our brains actually in a separate reality, being electrocuted to simulate this reality. It's pretty nice, and we're all here together. Yeah, yeah. It's really well, not that bad of a place to be in. Well, if once you uh, accept that you are a brain in a vat somewhere, then nothing else exists, right? You're, we're not here together because you guys don't exist. Because uh, I, I am a brain in a vat. That's kind of sad. So, yeah. It, I mean, it is right, but 
I mean, well, there's let me, also nothing you can do about it. Let me let me so, take back what I said a second ago. I said this isn't that bad of a place to live in, or something to that effect. For for some people, it's dreadfully horrible. For other yes. people, it is bliss. Um, so I can't speak for everyone, but generally, actually, but, no, g- generally the world is a pretty okay place. Well, and shout out to me. episode two, suffering. If uh, if you're having yeah. a hard time getting through <laughs> yeah. this reality, check that one out. Um, yeah, and I, I think coming from a place of understanding and acceptance is a good step towards a healthier future because uh, in, in my past I've struggled with my own existence. I've struggled with a lot of things in my life and I played the woe is me card and it it's really like running in circles. Like you don't know what happens after death so you can't guarantee that it's going to be any better than this. And that's a, that's a thing, something that humans are cursed with, is you don't, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't imagine other animals like squirrels or mooses or bears having an existential crisis. Uh, I mean, maybe they do consciously think, oh my gosh, I gotta go down to, you know, they don't think in language, but they think I gotta go down to the river and I gotta hunt for fish. And this is the last thing I want to do right now. I think, I, they've accept- I, I think they've accepted it. It's possible. I Yeah, I personally just don't know that they really ever think about it. I right. think that's sort of what separates humans from yeah, maybe not. the rest of the animal kingdom. is yeah. this ability to abstract think and to yeah. imagine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I think specifically the yeah. ability to objectively reason, hmm. uh, and especially related to the outside world, right? Because part of consciousness is you have to be able to perceive your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, so the baseline is to perceive the the surroundings, and then to take it to the next level, we're objectively reasoning uh, when looking upon these these external factors. We can yeah. think about certain things, and, and the, that's where imagination and abstract thinking really plays in. I think right. Mm-hmm. We've we've been removed from the survival mode that the rest of the animal kingdom is oh, entangled okay. with, like, uh, I said entangled again. Uh, I just shouldn't, shouldn't repeat words. I, I, I get your point. I <laughs> shouldn't repeat words. I get your point, though. Yeah. You do it one too many times, you'll never hear the end of it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I don't think a brown bear has, like, it's like no hard feelings on either side, if a brown bear decides to enter a creek and catch a fish and eat that fish, like that is the is the name of the game. Like Charles has been chosen by the bear. Good yeah, luck, Charles. I, if, uh, if the bear could be infinitely full for the rest of its life and just die of natural causes, it wouldn't have a need to eat. It yeah, wouldn't, it almost would be discontent. It would. It. Maybe. There'd be no reward for eating. Like survival is the reward for eating. Yes. Well, yeah, I guess I'm thinking if if the only thing that you do, because it's the only thing that you really know how to do, is within reason, for sake of conversation, hunt, because you're a bear. Right. And now you are locked in a cage, and you are simply just fed. Imagine how bored you get. You're like, I can't even do what I feel well, like even I'm if supposed you're to do right now. Locked, well, yeah, I, I guess when, when Derek had first said it, I wasn't thinking about something locked like in a zoo. cage. Like a zoo, okay. I was thinking of a bear that is just has no need to eat. Just has no need to eat, okay. Right, that doesn't necessarily mean that bear is going to be discontent. Maybe it'll find something else to do. Like, mm-hmm. And maybe it will eat, for example, honey, because bears like honey, mm. not because it fills them up, but because of the taste yeah Mm. so it'll still possibly eat honey uh climb trees you know mate with other animals markets territory bears i guess just a a lot of bear sex if the food's covered but you ever see like bear sex Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) the best kind (laughs) the most dangerous kind (laughs) It's true. Go on, James. You were about to say something, and then we just started talking well, about bareback um, sex. Well, well, Derek had said about when humans were not in the society like we're now, and, and we're in a survival mode, that we didn't have the luxury of being able to utilize our 
higher degree of consciousness. But I think, you know, uh, religion has been around since the Stone Age. Hmm. Uh, And as soon as people started gathering together, they made laws. They made uh, different guidelines for things. So I, I think that that right there is just one example of this high degree of consciousness that we have. And, and that comes specifically through language, right? Written and verbal. Yeah. Uh, at first it was pictures, mostly. Uh, little cave drawings or something. But uh, eventually we had recorded history. Uh, and we were, we were able to share our perspectives with, with each other, which is something that no other animal has. No mm-hmm. other animal has recorded history that hasn't been recorded by humans. Well, on Earth at least. But, uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I understand. Sure. I, think, yeah. I think love has really catalyzed our existential thought process at, at some point. At some point. I, I, I see it as, okay, um, every, every living thing dies uh, one way or another. Even if something is biologically immortal, there are things that will eventually kill it. Mm-hmm. So, with humans, I can, like, kind of imagine us as hunter-gatherers, and, like, there are records, pre- well, there's not no prehistoric record, that's an oxymoron, but there is <laughs> evidence that our ancestors buried their dead. Mm. Yeah. And that's significant because we are giving significance to death. Why would we do that? Well, maybe they maybe we love them. Maybe they grew a garden off of the dead body. That's maybe that's a too. really good point. What if they somehow found out that humans were just super good soil and that was the only reason they started doing it? Like, wow, we can just get amazing soil yeah. off dead people, so let's just bury them. They didn't want to eat their dead because cannibalism is unnatural. It's not it's, actually though. I mean in a lot of animal like uh, you look at there are certain primates that they just eat yes. each other. Oh well, well they they don't eat people of their clan. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, um, you have a very good point there. But they do they yeah, they'll they'll eat the the flesh of the Warrior same clan. species. Yeah. Right. Right. But was this primates? I believe it's primates, a and I, yeah. I, someone's gotta fact check me on this, but I believe it was some kind of chimpanzee uh, group somewhere yeah. in South America, but I I'm just pulling it out of my bum because I can't even remember just exactly resorted where it's cannibalism. From. Well, they they have there's yeah so there's different groups of them and sometimes they combat for resources and or territory and so they end up just killing each other and then it's, well we got to eat so let's take that guy we just killed from that clan and just eat him. Could we divert back to the whole love thing? Sorry, from the yeah, cannibal thing. We, yeah. Let's uh, go back to that. Um, so now we from love to cannibalism. So human mourning, the the process of mourning uh, a death isn't just a human activity. It's also like like elephants, for example. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Mourn the death of their loved ones and will revisit their bones when yeah. they migrate back to wherever they're going or, or just on the way. And this scene that shows that there's this capacity to certain animals that, I mean, decades ago we never would have even attributed to them. Right. You know? Right. There's well, there's an attachment. There, there's, there's feeling. There, there is a clear like. There's oh my god. Yeah. There's, there's definitely emotion and feeling, but I don't know how much that is linked to consciousness. Okay. I'm not. I, I honestly don't know. Right. If right. consciousness is what causes emotion oh, i think i think you have to be conscious um you might well, have to you be could feel emotion in a dream state but you have to be definitely alive at the least to feel emotion right yeah duh <laughs> um i don't yes. i don't know to what extent wait you wait, have to be no. conscious to feel yeah i don't think so uh I think you definitely have to be alive to feel emotion, but at least as far as we know. Yeah, okay, in, yeah, yeah, in this yeah. reality, yeah. you have right. to be as alive as we to know. feel emotion. <laughs> Correct. Right. But there, you know, like, for example, if someone's uh, in hospice or in the hospital, they're un- uh, mostly unresponsive, but they can move a finger to say yes or no, or, like, they find ways to express a thought to someone 
So they're clearly sentient and feeling, but Seeing now, their, yeah. yeah, their no capacity is either. limited. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. So clearly, like, consciousness opens up the door for these things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you will experience it if you're, for example, a uh, fly. Yeah. You know, I think dogs are very emotionally... Confident? Uh, compet- I guess. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but they yeah, don't they, understand words. Right. They, so they, Yeah, they don't understand words, but they understand but, triggers from words. Yes. Yeah. But, they get your point, But they though. can... They understand emotions. They can yes. feed off of your... Emo- like, they can understand your emotions. I... So, so just the degree of consciousness that dogs have is mm-hmm. clearly below ours because we have written language, recorded history, abstract Multiple thinking, languages. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's pretty safe to say that humans are the most conscious mm-hmm. uh, or at least have done the most with their consciousness. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'll say that. Yeah. I feel like dolphins, they, they just, they know and they go with nature. Hmm. They, it's possible, yeah. Because yeah. their brains are bigger, right? Which doesn't necessarily mean they're smarter, but they've got more going on up there. As like, f- f- I, I gotta be they careful have how I phrase that. Have echolocation, which is I gotta uh, be careful how I phrase. They got more going on cool. up there, but we can't know, do that. Yeah, yeah that's echo, what they're echolocation. Echolocation. Yeah. So, so dogs can, you know, have have better in tuned feelings, mm-hmm. but less consciousness. Yes. Or a lower degree of consciousness. Yes. So, maybe consciousness doesn't affect feeling because they have a lower degree of consciousness but a higher degree of emotion i don't know you can feel things that start internally as humans at least i'm not sure about other animals maybe it's just external stimulus that they respond to and then they feel emotion but humans can also feel emotion just from within Hmm. With their own, within their own thought process, like I've cried, I've been, can, I've can, smiled over thoughts I've had. Yeah, you it, can it make didn't... yourself sad, or mm-hmm. yeah. You know, but I'm not sure. Yeah, can animals do that? Well, when they, you've seen videos or whatever of ant, like dogs sleeping and they're dreaming, and then they look frightened or something, or trying to run. So mm-hmm. it's almost uh, it, they can create those emotional responses responses within their own mind. However, does a dog sit there in its bed when it's bored and imagine a scenario? I don't don't know. Can't manipulate their emotions as much as we can? I'm unsure. Or, you know, maybe the degree of consciousness that you have unlocks more emotions. Like we were saying, love, uh, I think, is pretty uniquely human. I'm sure that there's other animals that feel it, but love, I think, is sort of this... I, I don't want to say it's a biological trick because it is, but I don't want to say it. That's okay. Right. You can say it if that's yeah. if that's what you believe. I I, I think you you are right. Love is in I, many ways a biological trick. Yeah, I think there's a. I think it's the main reason that after people have kids, their marriage falls apart. But dang. Anyway, <laughs> wow. maybe because of our degree of consciousness, we were able to access this feeling of love. Also, that's only, that's strictly romantic love. I'm not saying, like, yeah. you shouldn't feel love for other things. Like, you should love the universe and yeah, each so other. Love has so many different But, terms, I mean, like romantic mm-hmm. love yeah. that is tricking you into reproducing, essentially. Yeah. It's a pretty yeah. that's a pretty negative view. I don't mean to be so negative. I don't want to be negative about it because if if you love somebody that's great. Right. Uh, and if you want to have kids, that's great. Like if that's what you want, you do it. Just, you know, if you don't want that, make sure you wear a condom. But <laughs> is uh, it possible I, for people to continue to love someone even if their sexual attraction to them has declined? Yes. I, I Sorry, I just, I think my definition of love is more of action. So, it, it, you, if you love someone, it more so means that you are actively showing love for them 
whereas it's just so there's lust and then there's love and love builds off of lust but lust is the emotional feelings but love is the action but i think you can feel it. love for people and like yeah, see, and that's the thing is i get your point it's kind of a tricky definition yeah yeah um talking strictly romantic love though i think that yeah i think you could still well it do sort of, sort of like sort of like Phil was saying with this lust uh, idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, once that drops off, you can still have love there in, right. in the relationship. Um, do swans but, love their part? Because aren't d- correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it swans that have lifetime partners, or is it something else? Yes. So I do think they swans, uh, yeah. do they love? So their do penguins. Penguins have partners. Is it partner. is there love there? I just don't think they can wear a condom, so... so yeah, yeah. All right, right? You know, <laughs> there's not control. really, like, yeah. But I guess bird, I'm control. Saying, <laughs> bird control. Bird control. Bird control. Oh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm wondering... Oh, my God, we got the dad jokes tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that, you know... But why uh, stick with each other? Uh, it's survival. It's easier to have two... Companionship. Yeah, yeah like, it's just easier to combine resources and yeah. watch out for each other because then, so I guess that's why they, but then why is yeah. it them and why do so many other animals not do it? It's well, really weird how there's this, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there's very uh, few species. I, that I do know, that. at least in the, the way of penguins, um, a lot of people say that penguins have love, they can love each other because they only, they're monogamous, right? Mm hmm. Uh, but I think in that case, it's more that, you know, the, the penguins mate, the dad sits on the egg, and this is emperor penguins, um, dad sits on the egg, and the mom goes and hunts for food. And then by the time she gets back, the egg should be hatched, and they start raising this chick, I guess it's a chick. Yeah. Penguin chick. So. Uh, penguin chick. Together. Yeah. But I think, you know, that... The nature of the relationship doesn't come from love. It comes from the ease of sur- sur- survival. Yeah, right? I mean, you're in yeah. the Arctic, yeah. Antarctic. Antarctic. How else um, are you going to, a- as as a mother penguin, how else are you going to give birth to an egg and also feed it? Yes. Oh, I see your point. It's, it's yes. just a is, logical... Is that if the know. if the male wasn't there to protect the egg... To keep it warm, right. then it right. will never hatch. Yeah. So it is their biological job to yeah, so it is, it is stay on the egg. And then do they, you wonder if they start to develop feeling and attachment for each other, which I imagine they do. Because when you are a conscious being like that, I can imagine they feel emotion, they can show anger and other things. Okay. I'd, I'd yeah. like to think that if their partner died, they'd feel some sort of sadness. Because they think, oh no, I, the person I've been working with for the past however long is now just not here I, anymore. That kind of sucks. I think that kind of... De- Depends on degree of consciousness, um, and also whether or not their consciousness expands while they are living, or if they are just kind of stuck. Right, like they come into the world, being able to see, perceive, live hear as things, a penguin, live as a penguin, done. and that's just where they are. Right, sort of the, uh, uh, like you said, uh, limited by the body that the consciousness is in. Yeah, consciousness is limited soul, to the physical or, form it inhabits. Yeah, yeah, I think. Well, see, now that I'm using consciousness in another yeah, definition, it's, yeah. so it's hard to use that because I, I use consciousness in the sense of soul at some right. point, so yeah. it's a tricky thing. It depends on the person. I see myself as, like, a traveler of sorts in the sense where I, I don't like the idea of um, settling with, like, one aspect of life like i i want to experience many things i want to visit new cultures and experience what that's like and relate and share with other people and go different places see different things i i think uh other people would prefer to stay in one spot to do one thing there's kind of a comfort level Mm. with Being, um, being where they are, being exactly where they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, my new job has taken me to a lot of really small villages and historic towns Mm -hmm. and Amish communities and things like that. And yeah, they're, they're really comfortable with life because they're not asking for more. 
Yeah. At I least think Americans... animals are kind of the same. Okay, I can imagine that. Do you know what I mean? Like, an, I see what you're like at. unless. Okay, my fat cat's not a good example of this because she asks for food all the time because she's <laughs> fat. But animals are pretty content with the life they live, no matter how hard it is. Like, same fat cat was a stray in Kentucky and wandered the streets, ate trash. Like, she'll still eat from the trash if we let her. She tries to crawl into trash bags and then you gotta pull her all out. the time. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and she actually, the reason she ended up at the shelter was she was really sick with a uh, parasite and they found her on the street and she was recouping from that when we saw her and the rest is kind of history. But I don't really think she thought anything of it other than, well, I'm out on the street now. I just have to survive and yeah. just do whatever I have to do. Yeah. Drink parasitic water. That's horrible. Yeah, and they, but uh, I think, she didn't care. You know, a cat can't even comprehend that this water might have a parasite mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, it exactly. It just sees water and drinks yeah, it, it drinks because it, it needs a water. Point. Yep. Like a moth to a flame. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Which water, is literally just yeah. moths saying, oh, bright light, yeah. death. What is up with that? What is up with the whole moth? Heat. Why do they, it's heat. heat. You think that's Yeah, it's heat. heat. Oh, okay. They like the heat. Here we go. No, which I don't get why they don't just go out during the day then if it was warm during the day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, insects move in a different way. They—that's yeah. why they freak me out. Ooh. I. Uh, well, this, this. Sorry, this. I just thought of this. Um, this uh, wow, I'm just yep. fumbling with my words. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. So, yep. Yep. I, yep. I watched a video the other day of uh, a lot of people in, I guess, Australia really care for wolf spiders because they mm-hmm. do a really good job they, at wolf keeping spiders their. Are great. Yeah, they do a really good job <laughs> at keeping their homes protected. So. This guy's in his bathroom. And Yo, we watched that. I think we did. There was a yeah. wolf spider caught in the webs. Or not, sorry. It's caught in dust, right? Because obviously it no, webs are very mathematical and plotted. Wolf spiders so it's, don't spin webs. What, what, wolf spiders? Yeah. Okay, so maybe they're not familiar think. with how... Anyway, so this spider gets caught in I don't think it's this. a wolf spider either. I feel like it's the brown recluse. Brown recluse? It could have been. It gets caught in dust, and it can't move because it's entangled in everything. So... This guy gets an X-Acto knife and he starts cutting the dust away from off its legs. And at first it's kind of like, what is going on? But eventually this thing just stands there uh-huh. and it realizes, oh, it realizes to whatever capacity it does, this yeah. this thing is helping me. And it, and then at one point after he does enough legs, this the next like, couple, four or five legs on this thing, it lifts them up for him. To cut, the, like... to cut the stuff off. <laughs> he does one, and then it puts its leg down, then it raises yeah. the next one, yeah. and it cuts him off. And I'm thinking, this spider, to whatever extent it does, understands that this person's trying to help yeah, him. It's this not is kill. really weird. It, it, I thought we watched the video of the capacity. spider hunting a uh, cockroach. Oh, yeah, that's that's one we watched. That was epic. Yeah. That was terrifying. That was awesome. It yeah. literally just, like, it was on the wall, just chilling. And then it just And snaps. the cockroach is, like, he has it in a, in a um, Tupperware container. And he just puts it out. And right when he dumps the cockroach, the cockroach is still falling in the air. The spider had already, like, dismounted, landed perfectly on it. Mm-hmm. It was just like, boom, boom, boom. Just yeah. started lighting it's it wild. up. But, the, yeah, and just, it just shows how aware they are. Like, this thing knows, oh, this person's trying like... to cut the dust off my leg. You know, I'll raise my it's other couple legs. It's also just kicking legs. crap out of a cockroach. It's so it really doesn't care. Cockroach, yeah. But like, it has to eat. It makes you wonder how much they're aware. If it knows that a person's trying to actively remove dust mm. from its legs, and then it starts showing that it wants the dust to continue to be removed, it's, it's how much consciousness is there. Yeah. It really shows that it actually understands I'm ever, being helped. Have you right? ever had maybe, an animal bite you maybe, for no maybe. reason, though? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Well, it, well they, they, they have you. a reason. They have a reason. They have a reason. We just don't know. Right. But sometimes it can kind of seem unprovoked. Um, and just kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. It, it. I feel like animals don't typically do anything for no reason. Right. Because they just don't. Well, does Even when you're do doing nothing, no you're yeah. doing nothing. Yes. Well, how, would it do, how do you do something for no reason? I mean... How don't you? Like how? How wouldn't? Why? Why wouldn't you be able to do something for no reason? Everything you do has a reason. It has a purpose behind it. Not necessarily. No. No. Like you, what if I stab a, myself just right yeah, now? Just I'm just like, on a, on a just stab myself. You just do yeah, it. But the whole point of it was to do it. 
It's like you have maybe. intent behind it somewhere. Yeah, maybe you don't know. Maybe not, though. Maybe it's just something that popped into your head, and you didn't think about it, and you just did it. But there's a reason for doing it, then, because it just popped into your head, and then you just yeah. did it. But you did, if you don't even process that it popped into your head, you just do it. Well, then so then it's not. You don't even know that it popped into your head. Maybe but there's it didn't a reason pop it happened, head. though. We're getting off on maybe, the whole thing. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, we're, yeah. we're just flexing our human consciousness a little bit, <laughs> yeah, but it ain't say. about human consciousness. It's about, about an animal. Well, well, we but are humans an animal. are animals too. Correct. Correct. Animals, exactly. Humans are humans too. Humans are people too. <laughs> That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. That's what I said. Humans are animals too. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard to say. I uh, when I was taking honors ex- existentialism, I told you guys this many a time. Um, in college, I wrote a paper. We were writing a paper on consciousness, and my paper was specifically about animal consciousness and th- to the extent that we understand it, like, are they conscious? And I think the conclusion that I come to at the end is we really won't know. Because if we're saying, oh, animals are confined to whatever species they are, whatever brain they have, and whatever body they're confined into, well, so are we. Because humans are animals, too. I still think there are certain things that we can research and understand and then say that these animals have capacities similar to humans. So, I mean, you've got something to say. I just, I I don't know how much, uh, humans have done things differently than the other animals for a long time, right? We uh, just simply agriculture to start, right? Farming land is what brought societies together. That started Mm -hmm. civilization because you were able to sit down, stay in one spot rather than being a nomad. Right, and then from there we've progressed as a society rather than individuals, and I think that animals have progressed more as a like individual species than as a group of animals. Right. So maybe a bear, throughout the course of its life, had thoughts or images of things. Right. Maybe it did have some inkling of imagination and it was able to delve into some complex thoughts. That then dies with that bear. Mm. They're not able to share their perspective with other bears. They're not yeah. able to uh, record history or start farming land and bringing other bears together. So there's clearly something different about humans that we were able to. You guys know y equals mx plus b. Yeah. So. Why do, why, yeah. Yeah. What about it? Yeah, what about it? Like, what, what do, what do we do? What do we do with that? Is find that like, the, find the slope again? You find the, oh, you just <laughs> you find, find the slope. slope. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you do? We're like, what, but, but what am I doing? Why am I finding this slope? Because it's that you can build a barn. <laughs> okay. So that is, <laughs> right? that's humans right there. Yeah. I think all other animals, as far as I know, just go y equals mx plus b, and it its brain just does that mm. without wondering why. Well, that's a poor example, just because most animals I don't think. Okay, that well they don't know they, they don't know how to measure the slope of the example. line. But I but see your, I guess I see your point is that that it's just the initial thing, and then it doesn't go anywhere past that. Right? Right. Yeah, yeah, they're just living as they are. Yeah, whatever animal they are. Hmm. You're if you're a leopard, you're you're just living that leopard life. You're you're just running around, scaring people. Going, Can you imagine being a cheetah? Like the rush you would get running at seventy miles per hour, <laughs> feeling the ground beneath you, using your tail as a stabilizer. They can't turn into a creature. It's straight line speed. Yeah, I've, well, yeah, but it's insane to see them move. I mean, just seventy miles an hour is physically insane pace. Being that organism moving like that must be insane. Like if we went seventy miles an hour in our old cars, we'd be like, like shaking oh, violently. My car is, and a cheetah's just like. My yeah, car's yeah, yelling yeah. at me to slow yeah. down when yeah. I'm going at 72 miles per hour. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty incredible. Things are about to explode. Animals are incredible. Yeah, Life yeah. is. Life's incredible. Give me some give me some uh, give me some dolphin facts quick but before we wrap this up. I want some uh... um dolphins essentially do drugs recreationally so they eat a certain type of sea urchin that gets them high. 
They pass around puffer fish too. Don't um, they? Yeah, they they'll toss it around. Uh, and, and ingest they, the neurotoxin. They have sex for pleasure, um, not just for mating. They have full communities with like dolphin schools, mm -hmm. essentially for the young. Um, they can echolocate, which I mentioned before. Obviously, a lot of people know these facts already, but when you put it into perspective, yeah, right, they can recognize like, themselves in the mirror. This is another animal on Earth right. right now doing these things. Yes, and we can't echolocate. They do that with their brain. That is a real thing they do. It would be magic if Wait, a human. Is it, is it not a physical process? Is it just with their? Well, I mean, I got to right. backtrack. On Dolphins that, but... echolocate, right? Well, yeah, well, they, they yeah. do, but yeah. how it does is it? It's not telepathic though. It's it's a. It's uh, a we the, do the same the, thing with radar. We put out a sound frequency and it bounces yeah, back to us, so and that's how we locate. They do it with their yeah. with their vocal apparatus. I'm imagining is they shoot you know out echolocations. We could just do yeah, it right now. This is <laughs> this was on my Google search. Nice. <laughs> Fine dining. Fine dining. And breathing. And they have they they recognize themselves in the mirror, which mm -hmm. really shows that oh oh that's me. Oh, so they're aware of they're aware of who they are, right? They're alive. They they know the what's going this? on around them to whatever extent they do. It's just kind of wacky. There's so much life around us that is aware that it's living to whatever degree it does. It's um, almost all life does. How does echolocation work? Yeah. So in the front of the dolphin's blowhole, in the area we call our forehead, is their melon. <laughs> The melon consists of fatty tissue and fluid that serves as the lens through which sound is focused during echolocation. Echolocation is seen with sound, much like sonar on a submarine. They can only echolocate in the water and not through the air. Sound waves are created in the nasal sacs and focused through the melons at various frequencies, allowing the dolphin to see with sound. That's insane. Mm-hmm. The sound waves travel through the melon and into the water and bounce off an object of interest. The sound waves then travel back to the dolphin and are received by their lower jaw, which is also filled with a fatty fluid. The sound waves travel from the jaw to the inner ear and the nerves connected directly to the brain where they translate in the sound into an image. What? Yeah, see, that's insane. They can just see sound. Yes. That's so crazy. Essentially. That's, that's awesome. They can put out a sound and see an object based on that sound. Yeah, that's nuts. Humans can't do that. We are nothing. Yeah. <laughs> we are nothing. Yeah. yeah. We can't do that yet. Back to our regularly scheduled punk music and angst. Yeah. Hey, man, just appreciate life. Realize oh, that, generally speaking, all life is conscious and sentient and aware and it it it's gonna hurt if you hurt it so just be good to life you know don't go don't go kicking dogs for no reason or hurting things for no reason just love the planet we are all one and that's such a cliche thing to say but when we die our body becomes the ground and yada 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 so on and so forth but forget mm -hmm. even earth by the end of the universe by the end of time all the matter will be the same. Yeah. Yep. So we'll always be there. Will our soul consciousness, whatever you want to call it, be there? I'm not sure. I don't know. And that's the part that we question every single day. Yeah. It's it's the, it's the great question. What is beyond, yeah. What is beyond existence? Yeah. What is beyond the physical? Mm. I'm not sure, but I do know for a fact that we are here. And we should appreciate what's here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you for stopping by and listening to us. And we will see you next time.